much, ma'am. Thank you. Closures. So we all know that artificial intelligence is a booming topic and we wanted to see whether we can incorporate this in catechonus and its progression and other associated factors. So coming to risk factors, we know that there are a number of publications which give us a number of risk factors for keratoconus and we also have published our own 5 point nomograph which indicates that age, eye rubbing, atopic eye disease, frequent change of glasses and other factors play an important role in the progression of keratoconus. So we wanted to come and say that can we do a risk, uh, risk stratification in these patients? We, can we find out what is the most significant factor that leads to the progression of keratoconus? So uh, we've already published a paper where we use artificial intelligence and the topographic features to indicate whether a uh, few patients are either progressors or non-progressors depending upon the K-max of the patient. So we saw that there were uh, between any two between two visits which are six months apart if there was an increase in one diopter of k max that we call them as progressors so our in artificial intelligence model could uh, easily detect this so next we wanted to see if we can amalgamate this with other high risk factors and demographic factors so we wanted to create an artificial intelligence model where we were able to process multiple data and we could easily come and uh, give future outcomes of that patient. So this is my materials and methods. After ethics uh, committee approval, we recruited 500 eyes and it was a prospective observational study. All the catechonic patients had two visits, which were six months apart. Uh, the first AI model, as I said, indicated whether the patient was a progressor or a non-progressor on the topographic features. And our second AI model aimed at analyzing these with the demographic factors and risk factors. So we uh, went ahead and uh, asked all of these patients a very vigorous uh, data. This was our uh, questionnaire. And you can see that there are multiple data which were asked to the patient. Also, it included the laboratory investigations like vitamin D levels, B12 levels, and the IG levels. So this was our... Uh, this was our model, wherein uh, we took the. So this. So this was our model, wherein uh, it took uh, progress. So you can see that there's a branching pattern, and this took a number of parameters like vitamin D, Ig, and everything, and it uh, gave us a, a data where we could stratify these risk factors. So we saw that IgE was the highest risk factor, which told us that most of our patients who were progressors had a high level of IgE. The second was systemic allergy and so on. And our uh, model also predicted that on topographic factors, when there were 74% were predicted as progressors, our second AI model with demographic factors and risk factors also showed that they were progressors. And similarly, in stable patients, 70% of them were indicated as progressors on topographic features. And our second AI model, which included risk factors and demographic factors, also said the same. So coming to the discussion, so we added topographic factors, high risk factors, and the demographic data. And we, uh, our most important outcome was the risk stratification. So we monitored the serum Ig levels, vitamin D levels, and systemic allergy in all of these patients. So how do we bring this to the clinics? We saw a 14-year-old girl with keratoconus, and because of our AI models, we predicted what could be the highest uh, risk factors in this patient. So uh, we, uh, indicate, we asked for those blood investigations. The blood report indicated that she had a very high level of serum Ig, and vitamin D levels were low, and there were signs of systemic allergy as well from our demographic data, and she had a history of frequent eye rubbing. So we refer this patient to an immunologist and a physician to uh, elevate these risk factors. And because of that, we saw that she was stable over the next six months. So what we already know is that topographic parameters definitely help us uh, detect the progression of keratoconus. And demographic risk factors have also been given, but there has never been a risk stratification in this, uh, in this field. So we came across with the first AI-based model to determine and integrate these demographic and risk factors for progression and the importance of risk stratification and profiling of the patients, which helps in indicating the disease progression. Thank you. So we wanted to bring about the risk stratification, ma'am. So we wanted to see what is the most important risk factor that helps 
in indicating whether this patient can go in for progression or not. Yes. Thank you so much, ma'am.